hello, 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 and today we're going to be going over Toy Box and Toy Vendor. In fact, these cards are premier at generating card advantage. They're not even allowed at weddings because they always bring a plus four, if you know what I mean. <laughs> plus four in card advantage because guess what? If you're thinning, you're winning. I always like to say that, especially when we're thinning our decks. And these cards are the premier deck thinners and advantage generators. They can go really hard, but the thing is, one of them only has a 25% chance of successfully resolving and getting through doing that plus four and generating. While another one of these cards here has a 75% chance of going through if you go first. And we're going to go over both of these and how this happens and what they can do and how to generate maximum advantage with these cards. Let's start off with Toy Box. And for those of you that don't know what Toy Box does, it's a very relatively new card here so if you're unfamiliar with it that's fine if the opponent attacks has multiple effects here's what it does the opponent attacks send one face down card you control to the graveyard that's a spell and trap by the way send a face down oh no it doesn't even have to be a spell and trap send a face down card you control destroy an attacking monster very very interesting all right that's kind of cool that's like a c grade effect that's why even i messed up reading that card because I nobody really uses it, never really comes in handy that that much. But hey, it, it's 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 kind of cool. So C grade effect there. But that's not why we're using it. That's just the bonus effect. I just wanted to go over that first. What we're really going to use it for is this effect here. You could set two toy monsters from anywhere as spells, and I say anywhere in maybe quotations or the little asterisks up there because it's not really anywhere. It's your face up monster zone, your graveyard your deck, your hand, it just doesn't include banishment, your banish zone. So pretty much anywhere. So I'm just going to say anywhere, just but just know it just doesn't include the banish zone, but pretty much anywhere you're setting to toys, monsters, anywhere as spells. And even though that's a really good effect, I'm giving that a D because if we're using it for that effect, we can't use the other effect that it has because you can only use one of these effects per turn. And that is you could destroy two cards that you own in your spell and trap cards or uh, spell and trap zone excuse me so that's what we really want to do and uh, keep in mind this isn't a you can only use this once per turn kind of effect if we look at this uh, here you can actually use both of these if you have another copy right so you can use each of them so the goal is really to use one to set two cards and then use the other to destroy two so you could special summon them or if you're playing decks that like stuff to be destroyed think of unchained ancient gear they love their stuff to be destroyed so maybe you can sneak this as well in those kind of decks but if you're using like a pure toy kind of deck these are the kind of the cards that you're setting right toy tank toy magician toy soldier what do you mean what do these cards do they all these toy cards have something in common and you could set them from your hand as a spell. That's right. So you can use it. And and if they're destroyed or sent to the graveyard as a spell, you get to special summon those toy cards, those toy cards. So really, I want to uh, focus in on the toy soldier because he also has a bonus effect too. So the toy tank also has a nice little bonus effect. But the toy soldier also acts as a search in that he adds a box a toy box when he's summoned or if you already have a toy box you can add a light level four from your deck to your hand right so that's why the light level four is in quotation marks because you can add a light level four to your hand if you have a toy box otherwise you're going to add a toy box so very very interesting that they do that but here's the thing the odds of getting two toy boxes in your hand starting hand it's very very low or i guess you could have a toy box or a toy soldier so you could have any of those, those two combinations to get your toy thing going because if you have a toy soldier summon that that can get you an additional toy box to get you the scenario up above but the thing is the math says you only have a 15.4 percent chance if you're running both of those copies at three in a 40 card deck going first or similarly, you have a 21% chance of that happening if you're going second. Very, very interesting. But that's not all the options you have. You do could have maybe a toy box in your hand and you could already set the two to toy cards in your 
if you have two toy cards in your hand, you could set two toy cards and use two toy, uh, toy box to destroy them, getting you the two level fords on the field that way. That's only a 6.5% chance if you go first or an 11.5% chance of happening if you go second, assuming you're using the traditional amounts of toys, cards that, that the toy box usually runs, which is about, I think, six toy cards maximum because you're always running three toy soldiers and maybe two toy tanks and one toy magician. Altogether, even if you include other cards that uh, can pop back row, uh, even if we add additional cards like giant trunades, stuff like that, that can pop your back row as well. We try to even be a little bit of generous. No matter what, we won't have more than a 25% chance of the optimal board happening for toy box. So because of that, even though it's a relatively new kind of engine, I would say, I don't recommend it because of that. It's really, really interesting. In fact, there is one toy engine that I recommend better and it's toy vendor this card's been out since who knows like 1942 I don't know it's 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 maybe our grandparents know of this card that's how old it is but really interesting is this card's been out since the fluffles have been a thing and it's not once per turn that's how old it is and it really is a generating machine in fact it generates more advantage than I don't know uh a, a, a solar a solar panel on a sunny day that's how much advantage it's generating you. anyways what it does if you've been living under a rock or you've just never used a toy vendor engine discard a card draw one card and you can special summon that card from your hand if you drew a fluffle otherwise discard it hmm, kind of interesting no not really that's a d effect you're almost never going to use it for that effect uh, maybe if you're using some kind of engine that loves to discard their cards to the graveyard, like a slime or water enchantress, the water, <laughs> water enchantress engine, you know, like adventure or something like that, that likes to get discarded. A lot of discard engines, it might come in handy, but other than that, no D. And speaking of guardian slime, I did do a video on that that you could see up, up above. I'll leave the link to that and why the guardian slime engine is so good right now, especially in ten pine. But anyways, moving on, that's a D effect. We're not really going to use that for that. Here's a good another effect that has. If it's sent to the graveyard, add a Fluffle card or an Edgem Sabres. Sabres. I don't know how to say that. Sabres? I don't know. Either way, that's a C. And you might be saying, well, if those are the only two uh, effects, why are you talking this card up so much, right? I gave the first card effect a D, and I give this card effect a C. Well... The Fluffles have a very interesting card that we can add uh, that's even better than Pot of Greed. If you think Pot of Greed is good at giving you advantage, well, this next card right here is even better. Fluffle Wings. What does this card do? Well, it's a lot to unpack here, but I'm going to make it nice and simple. Basically, if you control Toy Vendor and Wings is in your graveyard and you, you have another Fluffle card in your graveyard, you banish the Wings. Target the Fluffle card in your graveyard. Draw one. Then you can send Toy Vendor to the graveyard. Draw another card. So already, that's draw two. And remember, when Toy Vendor goes to the graveyard, it lets you draw a Fluffle card as well, or the Edge of Sabres. So you're getting a plus two, plus another card. Very, very good there. And it's it, it can't it doesn't even have to stop there. Uh, so like, remember how I was showcasing Toy Soldier? Fluffles have their own little unique searcher, and you don't even have to waste a normal summon on it. Fluffle Bear, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, and it lets you set one toy vendor directly. Very, very good. Or, if you have a toy vendor, your normal summon of choice will actually be this Fluffle Dolphin, because you could target a toy vendor in your graveyard, and if you do, now you can send a Fluffle Monster or the Edge Imp, Sabres, from your deck to the graveyard, and... Also has another card where, where if you uh, fusion some of it, you could get your polymerization back. But that's all you need to know because if you have the toy vendor in your graveyard with Fluffle Dolphin, you can set the toy vendor and then send Fluffle Wings so you can get your combo going that way. So a lot of other things to do. And also, also Fluffle has a searcher in Fluffle Dog to really get what you need. Funny enough, if I'm using the Fluffle Engine, I only play one Fluffle Dog. I really don't need the Searchers because that's how consistent they are. I'll show you a sample deck with this later. 
of what to do to get such this powerful engine rolling. But anyways, all you really need if, for your two card combo for this to get rolling is it like something like a Foolish Burial Goods or Fluffle Dolphin. Or if you have cards that you, you have your toy vendor in your hand and get it to the graveyard somehow. Maybe you're running a horse engine, maybe Dia Bell Star, something that can pitch your toy vendor. Whatever you need, you just need to pitch something to pitch toy vendor and a Fluffle Dolphin. Or similarly, you can have a Fluffle Bear and a Fluffle Wings. That's full combo as well. You can have a Fluffle Dog with a, a toy vendor in graveyard. There's a lot of different ways. In fact, I'm not even listing all of the ways that this combo can roll, get rolling and happening, but just using Fluffles alone has a 75% chance for you to get a, a, draw, a draw two, kind of like a draw three even, and 85% if I include some other cards, which I didn't even show you yet, which I'm gonna show you now. Fluff has is the king of ad generating advantage. In fact, look at these cards here. These are all Fluffle or Edgeimp cards, which go with the Fluffles that all generate uh, advantage. Fluffle Penguin, when we fuse with it and get a Fluffle card, let's just draw two, discard one. Absolutely insane. Fry for Patchwork, let's just add an Edgeimp monster and a Pomerization. We're getting a lot of two for ones if you if you aren't seeing the, the, the pattern here. An edge and chain in the middle here. If that card is sent to the graveyard, you can get a Frightford card from your deck to your hand. And Frightford Patchwork is a Frightford card. So you can see how those can generate advantage. And then you fuse with the Fluffles. You could discard a card. And if you discard Toy Vendor, now you're getting another Fluffle card. Absolutely insane. And when you include these cards in, you have over an 85% chance to generate the starting combo. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me tell you a look and let me take a look and let me give you a sample replay here of what I'm talking about and how Fluff can be so good. Hello, hello. And now here we go where I'm going to show you the power of Toy Vendor and what it can do for your deck and how it generates such an insane advantage. In fact, I'm going to go up against a deck that generates a lot of advantage. So I'm going to put up more advantage than this deck and you'll see what I mean. So we're going to start off with doing our Fluffle plays. I start off by using Toy Vendor to get to the graveyard by using Foolish Burial Goods. Remember, this is not a once per turn. Toy Vendor is not a once per turn. So I have a deadly play. I could do a Fluffle Dolphin. But before I do that, I am baiting everything I can before I do the Fluffle plays. In fact, I'm, I'd rather do the Horus plays first because that's how much advantage this Toy Vendor is going to generate me that I want to save my normal summon Fluffle for later. But anyways, I set up a negate. If you don't know, two level eights can give you this Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, which gives you a monster negate. That means when I use, finally do decide to use my Fluffle Dolphin, I'm going to be protected from Ash Blossoms and Effect Veilers thanks to this. I'll also be attacked, protected from Nibiru's. But what's really important is that I thin my deck, that I mill it out. Because look at this, I finally am using the Fluffle Dolphin to send the, to set a toy vendor and to send the Fluffle Wings, which is gonna give me the draw too. Now, what's crazy is I finally do, I'm at 25 cards. I milled my deck almost halfway. It's thinner than a Victoria's Secret model right now. I thinned my deck so much. And so when I get to draw two cards here, I get to draw from really beefy cards, really impactful cards. And I'm not done yet. Furthermore, when I fuse with Pomerization using that Fluffle Penguin, I also get to draw two more cards and discard a card. Being the king of advantage, I'm generating so much advantage here. Oh my gosh. And look at this. Also to know, interesting to know, I made a level eight Fryford card with the, with the with the fusion, which pairs very well with my Horus engine. So I'm getting a lot of value with that. So not only now will I have a monster negate in the Photon Lord, but I'm gonna go into Hope Harbinger and get a spell and trap negate. And I might as well just link those two cards as well into a link monster. I'll go into SP Little Knight. She might come in handy for another form of interruption. So now Look at all of this milling. I have 21 cards and I could draw the Curry Photon, by the way, that I put on top of my back deck at will at any time that I want. That's the power of Pine Saw, baby, or should I say a uh, toy vendor. Anyways, Maxi, if he has a card like called by the grave, I could stop it. And if he has Ash Blossom, I could stop it thanks to my two negates. So now he has to sit under Maxi 
if he wants to play his tier element cards. But I'm gonna go right into his Kit Kalos here. And from Kit Kalos, let me speed it up. Oh, and misplay by me, by the way. I should have used my quick effect to draw the Curry Photon, which I knew was on the top of my deck because I used it with Edge and Sabres. Small misplay by me there, but it's not gonna matter in the end because my deck is built to last. I love building these control decks, these powerful decks. Anyways, you can see here, tier elements. The hit, these guys are made for milling. This is a mill deck, and right now I milled more than him. I'm like a farmer in the 1800s, just milling. You know what I'm saying? Those mill farmers, like, like this is how I churn the butter, right? So I'm just churning right now, and we're going into very, very grind game. You can see here he's sending transaction rollback, and it's gonna be one of these games where it's just what I like to call him a slobber knocker, as you could tell, that we're just gonna go back and forth with this. Now, he finally gets to set up a very good defense. I always like the ability that the Paleos can do to set up a, a quite a good defense. But remember, even though he got to mill all of those cards that you just saw, he was using cards like this, send the top five cards of your deck to the graveyard, all of this stuff. I'm milling more than him. I'm already at 14 cards left, baby. There's not much more I can mill. I'm just super milling. I'm milling more than him, right? Uh, and now I'm gonna get that Curry Photon, by the way, back to the top of my deck. Edge and Sabres and Curry Photon have a nice little combo that work together too. So that's why I really like Forest, pairing Forest with the Toy Vendor combo. They work very well. He's gonna flip all of my cards face down with Daruma Karma Cannon. And now he gets to finally have his way with his deck. And he finally milled more than me. Look at that. He finally did. Now he's at 11 cards. And he gets to do his plays. And we all know how deadly tier can be once they're allowed to cook. Look at this. Now he finally gets to cook. And the reversal is being made. He not only sent my the gold sarcophagus back to my deck and now he gets to punish me gets to do cards and interestingly enough the punishment is not done yet because he's gonna make a zeus zeus deadly effect gets to wipe my whole field now so now basically i have nothing to my name except for these cards in my hand and he's still comboing off plus he has all the cards in his graveyard that's gonna do things and a deadly transaction rollback there as you can see all I have to my name is maybe a, a super pile up. I mean, a regular polymerization. He's got Kaleido Heart. He's got all these deadly cards. But as you can see, the power of Fluffles is not to be underestimated. This old archetype from 1942 or whatever you want to call it is going to can, can actually compete with tier elements if you play your cards right. And let's see. Oh, gosh, he sets three two. deadly. What can I do here? Well, I do have a pretty stacked hand, at least. So now the opposite effect is going to have. I have everything I need in my hand. I'm going to bait some stuff with the Fluffle Dolphin. And he's not going to allow that. He's going to chain his cards and put my Toy Vendor back into the deck by shuffling it with the, the Shizu cards. But that's just the bluff because remember, Fluffle Bear can just get it right from the deck anyways. And with that, I can even send my toy vendor to the graveyard i don't what i don't want to do that just yet because when toy vendor gets sent to the graveyard i can get the fluffle now with the fluffle wings i can do my combo again furthermore i can also get this very interesting card that goes well with the fluffles and that is chimera guardian chimera goes very well because while polymerization is in the graveyard it cannot be targeted and here's a great example of he has to target a card He's forced to target my bear because with the polymerization that's in the graveyard, you cannot target my guardian Chimera. So he's going to try to negate a card's effects. He's only going to be negating my fluffle bear. So when you use these old cards, that's what's pretty good is you have to read because they're cards that aren't used that much. So guardian Chimera gets a nice little protection effect. Fluffle Dolphin gets to shuffle a card back, so I got a nice little protection with that. I get a nice there, get to pop two, send those to the graveyard, but I did pop one of his cards, which does have a good graveyard effect, so he's going to get some of his cards back. But now Fluffle Wings! I get to repeat the effect, draw two, and I milled so much of my deck. Remember, it's thinner than a Victoria's Secret model. It's like a lollipop how thin my deck is right now. You know, like a mic stand. 
and now I get to finally attack his cards, but he's pointing it to that. He's using the rise to full height to protect himself, but he's actually hurting himself anyways, because every time he uses transaction rollback, he's got to cut his life points in half. And I've got this deadly guardian chimera here, and I do not have a palmerization anymore. Uh, I don't believe in my graveyard. So he is not protective as of right. Oh no, I do. I still have one more. So he still is protected. But what can this guy do now? He's trying to do anything. Uh, my Guardian Chimera right now is pretty much like a towers to him. He's got to find a way to take it out, but he can't. Look at all of his effects have to target the Fluffle Bear because he cannot target my Guardian Chimera. So he's forced to do that over and over again. I'll do another Max D because why not? We both are at 10 and 9 cards. We're milling each other so uh, strongly. And what's cool is we both have effects to bring cards back to the top of my deck. I have the pair of scissors that lets me bring cards to the top of my deck. And he has, when he gets to fuse, he gets to throw his cards to the top of our deck. So even though it looks like maybe we could deck each other out, we both have ways to keep recurring ourselves, to prevent ourselves from decking out. There's another Palmerization, which is really good. He really can't do anything to me. And funny enough, I can't really do anything to him. We're in a deadly slobber knocker here where we can't do anything to each other. It's like we have an invisible force field. But he gets to send the top five of his cards to the graveyard, getting himself dangerously low to two cards now. But he is going to fuse with Havnus, which is going to let him recover some cards, send them back to the top so he doesn't have to completely lose. And he's going gets. I think, I don't know how many times he made this kick Kalos. But he made this kick Kalos, I think, more times than I make banana bread on a Sunday. I do that every once in a while. So, <laughs> anyways, what is he going to do? He stops me from using my Palmerization, but honestly, that's just so I can get another Palmerization. And he cannot target my Guardian Chimera, because I realize right now, the Guardian Chimera is keeping me alive. Also, what's keeping me alive is in the back of my pocket. I do have this Kree Photon, which is in my deck right now because of... Tenpai, I do want to just highlight this. At any time, I can send this card from my hand to the graveyard by paying 2,000 life points. I'll take no damage this turn. That's in my deck because of Tenpai. And remember, when I make the Kari Photon guy, when I make this card, I can just sum search it whenever I want just by making two level eights. So very easy for me to summon, especially going first. So it really does protect me from Tenpai. So that's why this deck is also made to counter Tenpai. You really should have a deck to counter Tenpai, especially or some card to play that because about 33% of decks are using that. And that's why I'm running that engine too, a little side note. But fun fact, I go into Zombie Vampire here for also a protection effect. You know that this card has a secret protection effect. Normally people don't use this. But nobody can target this card with special effects uh, with monsters, special summoned monsters, except those that are special summoned from the graveyard. Very, very interesting. Now, I also go into another protection monster. I'm really trying to protect my Guardian Chimera. Dingursu also has a protection effect here. If a card would be destroyed by Battle of Card Effect, I'll detach a card from that card instead. So you can see how I'm protecting it with, with all of these cards I'm going to protect and the uh, Palmerizations in my graveyard are all protecting this Guardian Chimera right now, which I realize is the win condition of this card. I'm going to uh, 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 my deck. You also have to always realize what your win condition is. My win condition is like, wow, he cannot stop this Guardian Chimera. So uh, he's now trying to remove the soup, the Palmerizations from the deck to make the Guardian Chimera targetable. Here's the thing, this that, this match has been going on for so long, he is going to make a misplay, and I know it's due to the fact that he's running out of time. We were both running out of time this in this deck. Because I'm doing so much stuff that's protecting, he was actually thinking for a rather long time, which the deck, which this game doesn't show. I know he's like, he has to be out of time here, and so he just does the thing. I know he's just clicking stuff. He has to click his own card, and he ends up losing because of it. And it's, it, this is a surrender, but he had no time. He wasn't going to win. I had the Horus cards. He probably could have survived a couple more turns, maybe if he did some other things. But my between my Horus engine generating the cards, I just outdrew him, outgrinded him, outlasted him. And a lot of it is thanks to the Fluffle engine, 
the guardian chimera that is created, and plus the horse engine that I'm allowed to easily draw thanks to all the fluffle cards. Very, very well. That's the power of toy vendor. And you can see how I got more than plus four card advantage with that. All right, now let's look at the deck list. This horse fluffle combination goes together so well. It's like peanut butter and jelly, salt and pepper, the Hardy Boys making a good com combination. For those of you that are too young, don't know the Hardy Boys. That's a WWF wrestling combination tag team. But I digress. The Toy Vendor and King Sarcophagus go so well because King Sarcophagus can pitch Toy Vendor and Toy Vendor can use its drawing aspects to draw into King Car Sarcophagus or the Amnesty Glory of the Horus to start going into the horse place horse place can also mill an additional four cards if you haven't gotten into the toy vendor fluffle place so it's so good how they go back and forth and complement each other so well if you don't want to use the toy vendor and horse combo remember there's other cards toy vendor can go well with it can go well with the adventure engine it can go well with the slime engine any engines that really like to pitch cards and you can get to masters uh, i would say masters three easily and then after that it's a bit of a, a slog but you can hit above 50 uh percent win ratio probably about low 50s like 55 percent win ratio as long as you're a skilled duelist and you know what you're doing this deck can probably this list actually could get a bit better i do think i have a lot of fluffle cards but i do like relying on the otk that fluffle can provide going second they have a lot of good OTK lines going second, but there's also the horse OTK because you can go into Dragoobly on the Numeron Dragon as well. So there is dual ways to OTK if you're forced to go second. And going first, you can go into the horse line, which will get you these two cards, the spell negate and the monster negate. And of course, you could search for a uh, curry photon with this horse line to fight against Tenpai as well. You need to make sure that you're always countering the best deck in the meta. Right now, currently, as of November 4th, the best deck in the meta is Tenpai. So just remember to counter Tenpai with this Kuri Photon. Kuri Photon, for those of you that don't know what it does, you can send the card from the hand to the graveyard uh, by paying 200, uh, 2,000 life points, and you'll take no more damage. And remember, you'll search it through this card here, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, which you just need two level eight monsters. The last thing it says right there is during your opponent's turn, quick effect, get a Photon card from your deck, add it to your hand. So that's how you add it to your hand. Uh, so very, very good. And it's got, we got protection with Dern Goose, the good Dengursu. We got some general cards here to add to do. Uh, the Fluffle OTKs, and you can see Guardian Chimera there. Spell Negate, Monster Negate, some good milling. And you can just see, it's so just a straight solid deck, a very toolbox deck. And again, this will get you above 50% climb for what you need. And yeah, so that's all you need to do. If you like this deck list, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. Again, it, it could probably be optimized better. Maybe, maybe I'm running too many Fright for cards. I do like the level eight there. But other than that, you could probably put more generic cards. So maybe the extra deck could get tweaked a little bit. But I just drew this up real quick and it's been making me climb nice and easy. But I hope you guys can climb with it too. I always like to show the deck list because people always go in the comments. Show me the deck list. Show me the deck list. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.